Hi, welcome to Bookie. Today we'll unlock ways of seeing. Imagine the following situation which we may run into in our lives. You are attending a high-end event and you feel eager to make connections and impress certain important individuals. During the event, someone mentions a popular art exhibition that was recently held. When asked your opinion on it, however, you fail to say anything compelling, and feel extremely embarrassed by your ignorance. Instead, someone else speaks confidently about art and gets the spotlight. Now playing a low-key role, you sit on the sidelines as if you were invisible and mull over the situation in disappointment. You too want to be able to analyze an artwork. You wish you could effortlessly talk about your opinions with everyone's eyes fixed upon you, basking in people's admiration. You feel increasingly disheartened however, as you believe that it would require years of study in order to increase your level of artistic criticism. In fact, it's not so difficult to increase your level of artistic criticism. Although it may be hard for an ordinary person to understand a painting from its technical aspect, we can still appreciate an artwork from its historical background, the artist's purpose, and the hidden intentions behind different ways of interpretation. As we unlock ways of seeing in this bookie, you'll be able to get a preliminary understanding of the hidden languages of visual arts, including oil painting, photography, and advertisements within 30 minutes. The author of Ways of Seeing was John Berger, an influential English art critic, novelist, and painter in the contemporary world. He had extraordinary achievements in various fields of art. He held many solo exhibitions, and also wrote multiple monographs on art and novels. In 1972, the BBC broadcast his documentary series with the same name as the book we are introducing. Moreover, in the same year, his novel G won the Booker Prize and the James Tate Black Memorial Prize. In the field of art criticism, ways of seeing used to be an alternative to the mainstream practice. Traditional art critics usually focus on the technical aspects of artworks, such as lines, colors, and composition. This book however directs our attention to something else, for instance the artwork's historical background, the artist's purpose, and the hidden intentions behind different ways of interpretation. It tells us the secrets behind images and gives us a whole new perspective to appreciate artworks. Topics in this book include traditional ways of seeing the oil painting, the influence brought by photography to the ways of seeing, the depiction of women from male perspectives in classical oil paintings, and ways of seeing the art of advertising in the modern world. The arguments used in this book have influenced Western ways of seeing visual arts for several generations. In 2011, The Guardian listed ways of seeing among the 100 best nonfiction books of all time. Next, let's follow Berger's guide to learn the secret language of visual arts from the following three aspects. Part 1, Ways of Seeing in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction. Part 2, Ways of Seeing in the Age of the Traditional Oil Painting. Part 3, Ways of Seeing in the Modern Age of Advertising Art. Before camera was invented, oil painting was the mainstream visual language used in Europe for four centuries. However, as popular as the language of oil painting used to be in Europe, it has now become mysterious and puzzling. When we enter a museum and try to appreciate an artwork, we may find it difficult to understand, even when captions are provided beside it. So, is this strange sense of distance intrinsic to the artwork, or is it generated by humans? Berger argues that this distance is human-made. According to him, two powers have led to the mystification of artworks. Politics and Commerce To mystify artworks is to give a new explanation to certain facts. The new explanation makes the art piece, which was initially quite evident and straightforward, deviate from its original point and generates new meanings. For instance, the ruling class may distort the original meaning of a painting, in order to prevent viewers from paying attention to real-world social conflicts in which it represents. By doing so, they can solidify their political power. Another example can be speculators who hype a particular artwork in order to make it worth much more than it does to gain profits from it. There is a case presented in the book about the mystification of an oil painting by political interests. Franz Hals, 